Adam Afraire. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I'm delighted to be speaking in this debate during Black History Month. As the first black Conservative MP on these benches in 2005, um, it's uh, actually great to look around the chamber today, on all sides actually, um, because the complexion is new. And certainly on these benches, um, every one of us is here based on hard work, merit, and yes, of course, a little bit of luck from time to time. <laughs> when I was growing up in a single parent household in South East London, I have to say that um, racism was pretty crude. It was in your face. It was insults, casual violence, um, and it was very direct and very physical, um, including being spat at on buses and all sorts of things. Um, so I have to say that, when, um, that, um, that I never dreamt back in those days that there would be any opportunity to get to the lawmaking apparatus of our entire nation. I mean, what an amazing thing to achieve. I'm sure that everyone here of any background and persuasion feels exactly the same yeah. if they came from a, a challenging background. Um, so the beauty of this chamber and the strength of our United Kingdom is its rich diversity. Our country and our parliament have demonstrated the ability to evolve, adapt, integrate and integrate good people who share our values and aspirations. And we must almost demonstrate, we must almost also demonstrate that we reject beliefs and practices that run counter to our values and those that seek to undermine democracy, freedom of speech and the rule of law. But British history is long and it's diverse and it's undeniable. Magna Carta, democracy, the agrarian industrial revolutions, the uniting of our kingdom, free trade, the abolition of slavery, emancipation, the defeat of Hitler and fascism, freedom of speech and plurality of media, and in recent days, thank goodness, um, equality, uh, race relations and equal, equal opportunities. The constitution of our country consists of waves of people coming and going over millennia. Romans, Anglo-Saxons, Vikings, Normans, Flemings, Huguenots, Indians, Kenyans, Russians, and in more recent times, Americans, Australians, and soon to be Hong Kong Chinese. Let's face it, at some point in the last 12,000 years, every one of our ancestors was an immigrant to these islands. And if anyone's um, daring enough to take a DNA test, uh, you, may get, <laughs> you may get some interesting discoveries. <laughs> you may discover that actually... You might be one I may be <laughs> You may discover that actually we are all related. If you go back 70,000 years with modern human beings, we're all from the same, absolutely, we're all from the same stock. So um, black history is a rich and varied part of the history of our history as much as Asian, Jewish, Chinese and Mediterranean history. Also the history of sex, of gender, sexual preference, disability and class. So I'm delighted to see that the contribution of non-white Brits is increasingly recognised across society and Black History Month is a good opportunity to make those recognitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we cannot erase uncomfortable parts of our history, but we can learn from them. As a former governor of the Museum of London, I'm deeply conscious of the many and varied histories that run through the streets of London and flow through the veins of our nation. And it's important that these contributions and historic interactions between people across the globe are acknowledged in the teaching of history and culture. As every teacher will know, timetables are tight. So it's a good time to reflect on whether we have the right balance of lessons, both in the context of our history, but also in the composition of present day Britain. History should not be whitewashed. It should also not be blackwashed. Acknowledging black histories in schools should not crowd out other histories, but highlight the rich diversity of all the histories that we share. So I'll add a little note of caution, which is it's all too easy to say that a single characteristic, such as skin colour, eclipses and overshadows everything else. It's all too easy to fall for the dangerous identity politics where individuals are kettled into stereotypical communities um, for the benefit often of self-appointed spokesmen and leaders. It's all too easy to focus on difference to generate a sense of grievance for political gain, and I think we all recognise that. But I believe that what unites us as British citizens is far greater than what divides. So for me, Black History Month is a good time for reflection. I want us to live in a country where a person is judged not by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. And that goal 
is very much more within our reach than it was when I was a child in the 60s and 70s. So for me, when it comes to black history, it's not about segregating communities. It's not about the racist, dehumanizing, infantilizing politics of identity. It's about recognizing different histories and embracing our common humanity as equal citizens today. With a solid adherence to our values, our culture will continue its subtle evolution. Consensual integration will arise on the gentle currents of a myriad of individual free choices. So let's celebrate the rich and evolving nature of our great nation. Let's celebrate those people of various heritage who have made it in mainstream life in Britain, many of us in this chamber today. You know, let's not forget that from where we were you know, before the 70s and Bernie Grant, before we made our changes here. This was a very different complexion of this chamber. We've made huge advances and we've got people at the top of, we've got um, people, non-white people at the top of science, the top of media, um, the top of um, um, scientific academies. Um, we've got the editor of Vogue. I mean, there are so many good examples. Minister. But the, minister. The, the minister, forgive me, the minister. <laughs> The Honourable Minister. <laughs> we have so many examples of how far we've come, and yet there is still further to go. I acknowledge that. So let's set, celebrate the rich and evolving nature of our great nation. One nation, awash with difference, but united on the foundations of democracy, free speech, and equality under the law. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey.